I don't care what you do or how you have to do it. But Gabrielle is guilty, so you've got to win this case and then convince the judge to hand down the maximum penalty. Is that all? Herb, if Gabrielle goes free on this trumped-up insanity plea, nobody in this town is ever again going to have any faith in the judicial system. Oh, spare me the rhetoric, Michael. I know what my job is, and I'll do it. I'm not talking about your job, Herb. I am talking about justice. Oh, you mean the kind of justice that sees to it that no crime ever goes unpunished, like kidnapping or endangering the welfare of other people attempted you, uh, murder? The... You making a point here, I Herb? thought I was. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll let me make my point. I wish you would. I have come here to offer you my full cooperation. After all, Gabrielle did confess this crime directly to me, and I think the judge and the jury ought to hear that story. So, I want you to feel free to call me as a witness. You know, that's funny. I, I, I would have placed good money on your winding up being a witness for the defense. Yeah. After everything Gabrielle did to me, and a lot of other innocent people. Innocent, there's that word again. You're all right, Michael. I'll add your name to the list. If I feel your testimony is helpful to my case, I'll let you know. What do you mean, if? If, as in maybe, maybe not. Uh, Herb, my testimony is vital to your case. I'll be the judge of that. It's your dinner, but I thought I'd come over and bring you the good news. What? Judge Tipton has decided to disqualify himself. How did you know? I knew it after that brilliant motion you made in court this morning. He didn't have any choice. This is wonderful. No, I wouldn't Different Gabriel's go really got a fighting chance now. Yet. The champagne. I wouldn't order it yet. Why not? I don't follow you. Well, uh, basically, the judge that's replacing him, Judge Carlin, uh, might be a thorn in our side. Uh, is he already biased against Gabriel? No, no, nothing like that. He's a fair and square guy, but uh, well, he's real tough. Oh, dear. Don't worry, darling. I'm sure everything will be all right. Thank you. Thank you for coming over with the good news. Oh, you're and welcome. with the warning. I just thought you ought to know. Thank you. Bye. Nice Bye. to meet you. Bye. Gabrielle manipulate her way into freedom. Why are you giving up time away from your work, from your families, to hear this case? Gabrielle Medina confessed her guilt to the police, to me, without coercion. She admitted that she took baby Garrett Grant's lifeless body and placed it in baby Stephen McGillis's bassinet, that she then took baby Stephen McGillis and placed him in baby Garrett's bassinet. Why are we here? Because between the time of her confession and the time of her plea, Miss Medina had a change of heart. Indeed, a change of mind. You see, Miss Medina now claims that she was not criminally responsible for switching the babies because she was temporarily insane at the time of the action. Did she know right from wrong when she placed baby Stephen McGillis and baby Garrick's bassinet? Oh, yes, I assure you she did. But she didn't care. See, her only concerns were her comfort, her needs, her future with Michael Grant. How did she secure that future? How could she do that? by allowing Michael Grant to believe that his son was alive. A son who would need a mother's love, Gabrielle Medina's love. Gabrielle Medina, her actions in the nursery on the, that tragic night were not caused by some temporary lapse in mental function. From the time she arrived in this town, Gabrielle Medina has acted with deceit, cunning, and malevolence, habits no doubt acquired at a very early age. Kidnapping. Kidnapping was merely the, the culmination of years of manipulation. Evil and willful manipulation that deserves swift and just punishment. Look, Megan, I'm not saying that I condone Gabrielle's actions. But from what I understand, she is really racked with guilt about this whole thing. All right. Now, I know that doesn't take away the pain that she's caused Brenda and Michael, but... I mean, what about showing a little compassion? Now, you see, this just proves my theory. She has mastered the fine art of being a victim. She, first she cons Max, and now she's conning you. It never occurred to you that just possibly her remorse is genuine? No. The only thing genuine about Gabrielle Medina is her selfishness. You know, I think I understand what's going on here. Gabrielle is getting a lot of Max's attention, and I don't think you like it. She has managed to turn Max's life completely upside down. If she'd pulled off that baby thing without Brenda noticing she'd be happily married to Michael Grandbite right now. 
But no, she got caught, so she turns her attentions towards Max, and now he feels that he's responsible for her. She is the mother of his child. That's a very strong connection. Yes, I understand that. I really do. And for Al's sake, I wish that Gabrielle had changed. But she hasn't. What if your baby had been switched in the hospital nursery? What if the doctors told you your baby had died? What if you grieved for your baby only to discover that he was still alive? Could you forgive Gabrielle, me? Gabrielle, are you all right? Your baby from you in order to this isn't a trial about my switching the babies, John. This is a trial about my entire and life. He's going to bring up every mistake God, I've ever made. All right, but just try and hang on, OK? Why did I let you talk me into this, this damn trial? I should have pleaded guilty and got it over with. I want you to change my plea back Gabrielle, to guilty. Gabrielle, I haven't even presented my case yet, OK? I'm not throwing the towel in yet. Well, I don't think I can do this. I really don't think I can. Then don't listen to her. Recite poetry or, or talk to yourself, anything to block out the words. Premeditated malice to keep Kevin McGillis from his natural mother. Forgive me, Mr. Callison. Mr. Russell, will you approach the bench? Yes, sir. What is going on at the defense table? You're distracting me and the jury as well as Herb. But my apologies, Your Honor. I will not tolerate any lack of respect for this court or for the legal process. Yes, Your Honor, I understand my client's emotional state is somewhat... Uh... Will you tell her to pull herself together or get out of my courtroom? Now, you've had plenty of time to prepare her for this. I will not have these proceedings interrupted again. Is yes, that Your clear? Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Counselor. I'll see that uh, he gets a copy of your opening argument so that he can catch up on what he missed. You, uh, you're not freshmen. You know the rules. Let's play by them. Yes, Your Honor. Are you finished here, or would you like an opportunity to uh, restate the conclusion of your opening statement? I'm finished. Can John counter the DA's opening statement? Well, he's sure going to give it a hell of a shot. I hope someone points out that Mr. Callison has a personal vendetta against my daughter. Julia, he doesn't have anything personal against Gabrielle. He's just damn good at his job. Oh, his remarks seemed very personal to me. The look he gave you seemed very personal to me. What's he got against you? Me? Absolutely nothing. I've hardly spoken two words to the man in my life. Mr. Russell, your opening statement, please. Control Aqua Fresh. Now, there is in each one of us a great capacity for goodness and for evil. And because none of us is perfect, well, we, we often fail. And we make a lot of mistakes. We commit sins, whether by thought, by deed, or by word. Each and every one of us, including Gabrielle Medina. But, ladies and gentlemen, she is not the evil monster that the district attorney has portrayed. Hey. Yes, she made a mistake, a tragic mistake. But her action was not deliberate. She was giving Alicia Grand a ride to the hospital to have her baby. A young woman appeared in the roadway. She swerved. She ended up in a deep ravine. She was seriously hurt, as was Alicia Grand. But somehow, she managed to summon all of her strength and safely deliver Alicia's baby, all by herself. It was an act of both courage and love. And later, as Alicia lay dying in the hospital, and knowing that her death would devastate her husband, Michael Grand, she asked Gabrielle to please take care of Michael, to console him, to try and give him the same strength and courage which she had received from Gabrielle. And she also begged her to take care of her newborn son. When Alicia died, Gabrielle carried out her promise. And she consoled Michael, and she went to the hospital to console his son, and it was there that she watched in horror as poor little Garrick died. And with his death, her strength and her courage also died. Because she knew she couldn't carry out her promise to Alicia. And she knew that the baby's death would horribly devastate Michael Grand. Well, it was too much for her to bear. It was probably too much for any human to bear. And her mind snapped. She impulsively grabbed baby Stephen McGillis and placed him in Garrick's bassinet. Not for herself. Not for herself, but for Alicia and for Michael. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, it was not premeditated. And it was not done with malice in her heart. 
Had she had uh, full control of her faculties, she probably would have turned and walked away. But that was impossible at the time in her current condition. And yes, she did commit a crime, a sin in the eyes of God, a crime in the eyes of the law. But God, in his infinite mercy, does forgive us sinners. And the law, the law in its infinite wisdom does not hold one accountable if they are mentally impaired and do not know the difference between right and wrong at the time of their actions. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you to regard Gabrielle's actions with both wisdom and with mercy. Thank you. Will counsel approach the bench? And, uh, and if this is too much for you... No, 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 I want to be here.